Well, here we are getting ready to set it up. And I forgot the instruction manual, but I think I'll be okay. And I added a choke to the bag. So it's pretty easy to screw this thing together. And it's about six feet long once you do that. I have not extended anything. Pushes into the ground easy. Make sure that it's straight. And I added a choke in line because ABC always be choking. This is the antenna, fully collapsed, and it's about as tall as me. And then here's the antenna fully extended, and we're looking at around 12 and a half feet tall. Now you can adjust it by adjusting the length of the whip or by messing with the coil, and I'll show you that. I use the supplied radio plane, there's three of them. They extend out about 16 and a half feet. And then I want to show you right now how you adjust the impedance of the, I should say induction, of the coil by moving this. Use two hands when you do that because it's pretty tight and it's easier to move it further than you think you should. But uh, all in all, pretty easy. Whether you're building a passion project or launching a new product, PCBWay.com delivers high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly with speed, accuracy, and value for your work. Enjoy rapid turnaround global shipping, and expert support from a team that understands innovation. From the first sketch to the final production, PCBWay.com is with you every step of the way. Visit PCBWay.com and bring your vision to life. All right, so here's the antenna, and it comes in this nice clamshell case, and I love that. Um, makes it ultra-portable, and then I can put other stuff in here as I need it. Also, it has one of these on either side for hooking a shoulder strap too if that's what you want to do <clears throat> i'm not into the shoulder strap thing so i'm not going to do that the uh the handy carrying handle here is more than enough for me <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have inside the uh, first thing we're going to take a look at is the ground spike and it has this rubberized thing on the point which is nice and it also has a rubberized thing here to protect your threads, which is nice. And then it has an SO239 connector here. Let's see if I can pop this thing off. Almost just stuck myself with this, but there's your SO239. Also, if you take a look here, it has three ports. And this is for connecting your ground radials. We'll take a look at that. It comes with a whip antenna. I'm not sure how long this thing is, but it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it seems well built. The antenna itself, when it's all put together, has a maximum height of 3.7 meters, which I believe is a little over 12 feet. But don't quote me on that because I use the American system. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. <clears throat> you have two of these base poles. And the reason we use these is that it elevates the coil, which is right here, off of the ground. And I like that in these antenna designs. They're a little bit more efficient when you get them a little further up your antenna mast. Coils choke off a lot of current when they go when you're transmitting and the energy goes through them. Uh, smaller coils like this one choke off even more. And that's because of internal resistance in the coil. So the more of the antenna that you have in front of the coil, the more current uh, that will distribute from your antenna system. So I like that. I, I, I like when the coil is not on the ground and mounted up a little bit. Let's take a look at this. This is where all the magic happens. And again, it's got a rubberized protector over the threads. This is your coil that you adjust here with this thing that slides. It's a little tight, but that's probably a good thing so it doesn't mess up. And if you look on there, there is some graduations. None of them are marked. You could use a silver Sharpie to mark this for different bands if you wanted to or not. I'm assuming that all the way up moves your coil further up. It moves your connector on the coil further up, giving you um, usage of the entire coil. When you move it down, I'm assuming that you're using or bypassing most of that coil. I don't know for sure because I can't get this thing open and I'm not going to break it, opening it up. But this is the part I really like about the case is, is that it has this mesh zipper pouch here where I can put things. The antenna comes with some coaxial cable and a barrel connector that's an adapter from SO239 to BNC. Like if you're using something like a... Uh, ICOM IC705 that has a BNC antenna connector or any other radio that does. It comes with these, and I typically do not use the radials that come with these vertical antennas. Instead, I choose to use my homebrew radio plane that I made. But uh, we're going to use these. And you can see that they have these really tiny banana jacks on here, and they plug into the base of the antenna mount. 
like we talked about earlier, just like this. Um, given that they gave us three of these, we're going to go ahead and use them. These claim to be five meters long, so that is around 16 and a half feet, which is about right. So we're going to try them out. They um, have this rubberized, so it doesn't feel like PVC. It doesn't feel like silicone. I don't know what it is. I'm not entirely sure how flat those things are going to lay, but uh, we'll try it out anyway. It comes with a shoulder strap here that you can use. And then it comes with an instruction manual. Now, we're not going to take a big look at this instruction manual, but... Um, we are going to take a look at it for a second. I already looked at it, so I cheated. But um, when I get this out and you go through it, it tells you all about it. Here are some of the specs on the antenna. Let's take a quick peek at the specs. Frequency range is 5 to 50 megahertz. SWR when tuned, 1.5 is about as low as they say it's going to go. Uh, 50 ohm impedance, that's if you tuned it to 50 ohm impedance. And if you actually tuned it to 50 ohm impedance, then you would have 1 to 1. Maximum visible length, I'm assuming that's height, 3.7 meters. Maximum power rating, CW, uh, 100 watts, single sideband, 150 watts. It doesn't say anything about digital modes. Um, ground radial length, it says about 5 meters, 3 wires. Coaxial cables, 5 meters. Total weight, 2 grams, which is about 4.5 pounds. Net weight, 1 kilogram. I don't know what that means. And then there's the size of the carrying bag. But what's interesting about this instruction manual is it goes over everything that comes in the kit, right? So they have pictures of all the parts. But then the instruction manual says it comes with a user manual, and they give you a picture of the user manual that you're actually reading. See? <laughs> I just, I just, so I guess I have to look here to understand what I'm looking at here, but whatever. But I'm glad it comes with it. There are also some charts that they have in here showing you various readings, but, you know, this is all you know stuff that you would see on your antenna te um, analyzer anyway when you're when you're tuning your antenna so i'm not too worried about that and then there's a couple of instructional pictures of how to mount the antenna but that's it for what you get so up here you can see that i tuned it for the 40 meter band specifically 7.127 but i wasn't really going for that i just tuned it to 40 meters and i looked for the spot where i had the lowest swr and when you take a look at this curve here, I want to point out that it's pretty acute, meaning it's narrow or it's a little bit more high Q. And that's a result of me using more of the coil in order to make this happen. I had the antenna just about fully extended. I did have to pull it down just a little bit. And I had most of the coil in use. Now the coil goes all the way down to five megahertz. So there was still a little bit of coil there that for, I could have used. But I was pretty happy with this. Uh, you can see that our SWR, the lowest point, is 1 to 1.047. Now, the manufacturer's specification said it would go down to 1.5. And we got it a little bit lower because I'm that damn good. But overall, this is pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, what I wanted to do is adjust my marker, marker number 2, down here to be at the FT8 frequency, 7.074. And there I had an SWR of 1 to 1.8. Now, I probably could have tuned that in, but I wouldn't have done that because if I was operating out in the field and I was doing a quick setup, I'm close enough and I'm fine and I'm not upset about it. Now, let's turn our attention to the 20 meter band. And here I have a marker, marker number four. And you can see that right here is right at 14.074 megahertz. And I had an SWR of 1.1534. It's a little bit higher than what they said you could get as your lowest SWR. I really couldn't get it any lower than that. Uh, I did play around with it for a few minutes, and I might have been able to get it a little bit lower if I pulled more of the whip in from the antenna and maybe utilized more of the, the coil. But I didn't want to do that. Um, my perspective is, is that you want to have as much antenna in the air as you can possibly get. So would I be happy with 1.1534? Yeah, I think I would. I'm not too worried about it. It's about a 4% power return from the SWR. And to me, that's really not that big of a deal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to operate a little bit and I'll come back and show you what we got. So let's take a couple minutes to talk about how the antenna performed. And we didn't do well, and I'm not going to blame the antenna at all. So I had the antenna tuned to 20 meters, and then you can see that I had pretty good coverage of North America, and I made a handful of contacts around 8 or so in about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that, of activating. And uh, I was heard in, uh, in Europe and uh, North America, mostly in North America is what you would expect. 
What I did is I checked DX heat in their propagation meter, and you can see that over on the right-hand side. Now, if you look underneath that meter, which you can't, but if you could, you would see that there is zero contacts or, or zero um, stations here in my signal over there. So if you take a look at the SFI number, it's 145, and that's not bad. But if you take a look at the magnetic activity, K is starting to be bad, and then the A index of 58 is terrible. And if you look a little bit down on the band activity, there's really nothing. You can see a little bit of blue under 20, but it's really just between 0 and 9, probably closer to 0 than it is 9. And uh, it was really a struggle. Uh, I was doing some FT8, and my, my um, band scope was completely dead. Uh, noise was very high, and like I said, I only made about 8 contacts. I didn't change to any other bands because if you can, you can see that the band activity is really dismal at best. So I didn't expect that I was going to make any contacts. Um, again, I don't want to blame the antenna. I really like it. And when I set it up the first time, it was receiving well, but I didn't do any transmitting. And I wish I had, so it would have some sort of artifact that I could share with you. Maybe I'll do another activation with it and see how it goes. But uh, right now, this is what I got. So I figured it was a good opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, K and A index. And for the K index, it's really like a collection of metrics over a three hour range of geomagnetic activity. There are observation stations all over the world and the scale goes from zero to nine. Uh, like I said, it's a three hour range, so it's updated every three hours. So we had a K index of four, and that's the second bullet point, unsettled or active, possible minor disruptions. And then down on the A index, this is a daily average of K, and it's a linear scale that goes to 400. So if you look at A, we were at 58, which is the bottom bullet point. That says 50 plus major to severe storm, and that means solar disruption. And we have been having solar disruptions all week. I wanted to get this video out, so I was waited a few days hoping it was going to go down or go away, and it hasn't. You know, we're still having some of that activity that's causing problems. So here's where we are. Anyhow, what I'd like to do is say thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you to Radio Oddity for sending me this antenna for my review. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.